how they've materialised and some dust. I said, well, there you are. I told you what I was seeing with my, what I was imagining, and now you've captured it on film for me. So, there we are. Martin, you asked to show the energy. I was doing it with the yeah. ions. Yes, I was going in eventually, doing a bit of overtoning or a bit of bone work. Mm -hmm. um, but it, the science brings these on. And mm -hmm. um, with the, with the, um, the Elions on another talk will show you how you can ask. And if you ask what to vibrate and move around, it will. I've mm -hmm. had that. I've had that. And I've got photographic proof mm -hmm. of it without being a photographic anomaly. Because so I've actually, since the, since the last talk I did, or, or one of the first talks I did, I've actually deleted 56 pictures because they were just photographic anomaly. And we know that now. Mm -hmm. So, all for saying, I hope you enjoyed that little thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I'm going to sit down with you all. Any further questions? I was going to tell people uh, I used to go to this UFO ranch in South Central Washington. It's uh, Mount Adams. It's a 12,000 foot volcano. And uh, the ranch is at the, at the base of it. It's about uh, 13 miles away. And uh, it's an area that's known for paranormal activities, UFOs, and all kinds of things. Well, anyway, uh, I used to go out sky watching there frequently. I had a Sony night shot camera. It had super night shot, and that was four frames per second. And you could see the uh, these flashes of light on the mountain. Uh, and every, every night that I'd go there, it'd be in a slightly different place, and it'd be uh, several different numbers of, of flashes, one of the pure white light. It'd flicker for a minute and or just a few seconds, then go out. You never knew when it was going to happen. But it, uh, usually it happens uh, when the snow is off the mountain. <clears throat> There's usually snow on the mountain all year round. But it, it's called, uh, I, I call it uh, Mount Adams uh, Earth Lights, I believe. And I got it on YouTube. You can actually see. Where the lights are coming from is it was a, um, a pale moonlit light night, and you could see the snow fields. You could see exactly where uh, rocks just on one side of the snow field or where the light was coming from. So these are real. It wasn't specks of dust yeah, yeah, or yeah, insects yeah. or people yeah. uh, trying to say it was. It's a real thing. That's why it's nice to share the photographs because I've got what looked like pairs of wheels. And um, like the problem with Tinkerbell, well, I've got one like that, and um, it could have been a dragonfly going straight past immediately. Yeah. I was hoping we don't know. It just makes, it just makes things interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. I'd like to introduce our um, our next gentleman now, Roger. Okay. And um, he has a lot of stuff here. I'm not even going to say what he's going to do. Just put it up there, Steve. Is it unified physically? And I'm sure you some really interesting stuff because it's um, going back to the ancient okay. times. Yes. And his version of things that go through. Just give me more. Thanks, Roger. Very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. So, I'm, a, I'm Roger Anderton, and I'm an ex-British telecom engineer, and <clears throat> I've been interested in science for a long time, science and physics, and uh, I've got, a, as well as all the British telecom things like electronic engineering and that, I went on to do physics and the maths at Open University and that. So I've really studied the physics side of things. And what I, what, what I found is the version of history they teach physics students is what they call Whig history. So, so <clears throat> Whig history is, uh, is this is this what, how Wikipedia describes it. And basically, Weak history is not what really happened. 
it's sort of like what the mainstream education system thinks is a version of history is easy, easy enough to for the student, science students to understand and highlight the things that they should be knowing for their exams and so forth. So, weak history is really a lie. It's, it's like uh, George Orwell's 1984, where a person really writes history. So, the real history of what happened is, is covered up, and the weak history is taught to the physics students. So it took me a bit of time to find that out. So next slide. Uh, oh yeah, jumps on dying stuff. Do you want to that one? No, that's all right. It's just so it took my time to read it and then it's gone. Okay, so what, what, what I found is the place where the sort of like the physics history got me bit is mainly around this guy here, Einstein. It was sort of like suddenly Einstein had a great big influence on physics. And so yeah, it was taken as a revolution in physics. And he became world famous from about 1990 onwards because he predicted light bending, uh, starlight bending as it came to the Earth from space. And in 1919 they found that starlight bent and hence that discovery made him famous sort of his theories and so forth. So <coughs> the, the, the motivation for writing the with history really comes from Einstein. They sort of like concentrate on him, <coughs> concentrate on him and then they forget about history before Einstein. So that's how it gets, gets done. So if you... Thank you. Thank you. So the emphasis the mainstream has is on all the things that Einstein said. So if you didn't have so much emphasis on him, next slide, you would have more emphasis on what was happening before Einstein, like this person, Nikola Tesla. So Nikola Tesla was an extraordinary electrical engineer, and he it was responsible for the um, main power grid doing the AC and all the inventions stuff like that and he was also in, into lots of things like electrical engineering and things like radio and really when it came people think McConey invented radio but when it came to it the patents were actually held by Tesla so Tesla really there should be more emphasis upon his discoveries instead of Einstein but that's the way it's gone. Next is, is it true that if it wasn't for Tesla, we'd have had to have a power station every half a mile? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That was Edison's power system. Yeah, that was a DC. Yeah. DC. And yeah. it was Tesla that actually um, invented alternating current as we know it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the, the uh, reputation of Tesla has been distorted because it didn't fit this? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Yes. Those never my first heard of it. He was in love with this people or something, you know. And it really belittled him and the massive things that he achieved before he killed me. So, yeah, that's right. He turns up, he was employed by a scientist, I think it was JP Morgan, in general, from memory. And JP Morgan realised what he was doing and said to Tesla, if I continue employing you, so, so the weird history came about because it was a diversion from the things that Tesla was doing. I want to be getting off there. Oh, next, good. So, 
there's been a type of suppression in the mainstream physics community that what Einstein says is correct. And there's not been so much emphasis upon the things Einstein got wrong. And this is a documentary which has come out made by a lot of dissidents who believe that Einstein made a lot of mistakes. And this has not really been publicised enough. And so these, the family, Robert de Hussler and David de Hussler and other people have gone around and they've talked to uh, physicists, working physicists, uh, and theoretical physicists and so forth and they've got them to say that Einstein is wrong on a lot of things. So not only is it diversion onto what Einstein has been saying and say what Tesla was saying, but the mainstream has sort of like enforced a lot of mistakes and kept it quiet. So this film hopefully will open a few eyes that Einstein did get quite a lot of things wrong and the mainstream doesn't really want to admit that. Next slide please. Uh, so if we go back to Tesla, this is the sort of thing that Tesla was doing, that is Tesla coil and it's sending out electrical sparks. So Tesla was thinking in terms of what you call broadcast energy, where you're going to send electrical energy without using wires. So you would you would have free energy. And sort of like the conspiracy side of things is that the people the establishment didn't want that. They always wanted to tax energy usage. So free energy which Tesla was trying to give was suppressed. So next slide. So <clears throat> the things with Tesla uh, get really weird when you look into him because you come up with these stories but it's what's called the Philadelphia Experiment. And this is, this, this is a science fiction film. But there are people that say that the Philadelphia Experiment was a real thing. And the story is that there was this ship that was teleported probably through space and time during World War II. And they were using Tesla technology to do that. And they're also saying the Germans were using Tesla technology as well for building flying saucers. So this is how Einstein has been used to divert from all the weird things that were around Tesla. Next one. Is this with the Philadelphia experiment? Yeah. Was it? I thought it was. It did actually happen because yeah. weren't, weren't there a lot of the crew that were sent mad? by the experiment, they all had to be um, sectioned because they, they'd been, something had happened to them on board the boat. Yeah. It, uh, they wired it up and threw the switch, it disappeared for a short while and then came back and everybody on board was just uh, incoherent and, and blubbered. Yeah, you know? that is the story. If you, if you go on to the internet, there's a lot of information about the Philadelphia experiment. What they, what they say is the true story about the Philadelphia experiment. And then, then you've got the fictionalised version which turns up in science fiction films. So. <coughs> well, that, yeah, so that, that latest one. They talk about that. And, and if you go into it, there's a Judy Wood who reckons that Tesla. Yeah. Judy Wood who reckons that Tesla technology was used to destroy those twin towers in 911. Mm -hmm. So you've got a completely different version of physics mm -hmm. if you're looking at things from Tesla. So I, you've got Einstein with voice mistakes being pushed at us. But you cut back from what he was saying to people like Tesla that things get start to get really weird. Okay. So Tesla makes it into lots of uh, science 
science fiction sort of stories now, and this is sort of like an example, The Prestige, and that was a film about magicians, um, and the idea was to teleport somebody, and they were of course doing the illusion of teleportation, but they were in competition as magicians, trying to do a better magic trick than anybody else. So eventually in this story, they decide to do it for real. They decide to actually do the teleportation. And the person they get the technology from in the film is Tesla. This is, this is all fiction, I don't think, it's a true, don't think it's a true story, but this is how Tesla gets into films these days. Next slide. Yeah, this is David Bowie, and that he's in the film Prestige, playing Nikola Tesla, and I think that's the one of the Tesla uh, balls that behind him, which he uses to send out electricity, lightning. So Tesla is sort of like entering sometimes into films as a science fiction type of person. It's when David Bowie turns up in the film, he, he is very strange. It's like he's, he's in a mass of lightning and he's walking towards you. And it's like he's like looking like an alien. So it's, it does get, I think, to some extent, it's sort of like a diversion if you sort of like start thinking of Tesla as fantasy it then diverts your attention from that this is a real true person okay next slide so having discarded um, with history we we'll get on to what really happened physics history really comes from ancient wisdom sort of it comes from ancient Egypt and places like Babylon back to that far. So next slide. And the main person that it comes from is this person Pythagoras. Nobody knows what Pythagoras looked like. There's not really an image of him, so this is a made up thing. But the story behind Pythagoras is that he was the only Greek philosopher initiated into ancient Egyptian religion, their mystery school. So the ancient Greeks were really getting their information via Pythagoras. That was in their tradition was keep these this ancient wisdom as a secret. Next. So jumping forward to a bit more modern times. Ancient, there was ancient wisdom out there in, in the mystery schools and you had the Roman Empire and, and eventually the Roman Empire got to the point where the Western Empire and the Eastern Empire split and, and in the Eastern Empire or the Eastern Roman Empire was Byzantium and in the Western Empire it was sort of like pretty much ignorant people, ignorant barbarians who were not so educated. And the ancient wisdom was more or less held in Byzantium. So that was fine for a while until the Arabs managed to eventually conquer Byzantium. And so the ancient wisdom which was in Byzantium was then leaked out into the West. The books from their libraries and so forth suddenly came through to the West, Western Roman Empire. And it was sort of then a renaissance in the ancient wisdom in the Western Empire. Okay. Next slide. So you suddenly had people like Galileo, next slide, and Newton. And they were working from ancient wisdom, which has suddenly became uh, rejuvenized in Western, Western Europe. 
file and there's information coming through from places like Byzantium. Oops. So what they forget to tell you is after Newton, the next big person came along was this person, Boscovich. And Boscovich gave a unified field theory. And they don't tell you that at the university. They just keep quiet about it. They, they talk about Einstein and say Einstein never found a unified field theory. And they don't mention that this person found a unified field theory back in the 18th century. And in this area of the world, Yugoslavia, people are aware of how famous Boscovich is, but it's still being swept down as being not talked about too much in universities. Next. So, the unified field theory starts from Einstein, not Einstein, starts with Newton realising about the apple, Newton's apple. So Newton recognises the apple falls to the ground and he recognises the moon must be like that as well. The moon is held by gravity. And you've got a force acting between the apple and the earth. The earth is attracting the apple down. And the force is not by contact, which is very mysterious. You think of, you think somebody would have to push that, but the attraction seems to be without contact. It's action at a distance. So the idea was that there was a field. Next slide, please. So Boscovich worked out how this field operated. Oh, it's all clear now. Is it? <laughs> so, so <laughs> it's magical. This is, this is how the force operates. And so they miss, miss out telling you this at university, that this is the unified field theory, the curve exploding the force. And I think it's to do with the harmonics and resonances and stuff with Fibonacci sequences and sort of like number mysticism. Next. So, they've managed to keep most of this out of mainstream physics history, but it does turn up in books like this one, The Morning of the Magicians. And these people are sort of like talking about ideas like the ancient astral before von Däniken got interested in the ideas and they were talking about alchemy and things like that and they do mention Boscovich in there so in the alchemy sort of tradition uh, Boscovich is still known about Thank you. Is that Madame Yes, she, she talked about Boscovich as well so she was aware mm. of Boscovich's yeah. theory so even though they've managed to push this out of the mainstream physics, mm. these people were aware of it. Next slide. So the unified field theory is dealt with in films like this one. <coughs> what the beat do we know? So forth. On the next slide. And, and down the rabbit hole. And so it's basically everything has field of influence around it. And the actual theory in which the mainstream should be paying attention to is it started from this person called Roger Boscovich. And so I've got I've been uh, looking at this thing, I've got Roger Boscovich's book and I've also managed to Get it mentioned. I managed to get it mentioned some science conferences. I've got it mentioned. And I've translated a book from Serbia by my friend now, Dragoslav, who's a professor of chemistry. And 
and they're part of the world, they are aware of what's spiritual in detail. And so he's actually working from that sort of theory. It's just that it's not being paid attention to so much outside of that sort of area of the world. And also I've got, if you go on the internet, you get people who are dealing with things like uh, Tesla technology and they do explain some of them, like this person, Constein Merle, that theory to look at is post theory, just to mention it. And even you've got people who are dealing with our modern alchemy, such as Hudson, and they're dealing with things like Ormus, some sort of new age medicine, and they say if you want to understand this, you need to look at Boscovich's theory. So it is known about to some extent, it's just that at the universities, when they do physics, they're not mentioning it. So it's very weird. Thank you. focused on teaching Einstein. 
and, and it's sort of like the people I'm with are starting to say, well, Einstein made those mistakes, and, and this is not being highlighted. So the, this documentary is trying to highlight the kind of containment they've had on things, but trying to give a false idea of physics and a false idea of history. Yeah. So are you really saying, Roger, that E doesn't equal MC2 then? <coughs> well, there's people who you don't believe in the MC squared, but there's some people who do, and then there's some people who say, well, that came from people who earlier than Einstein. stuff. Mm -hmm. Because you look at Paul Carey, and he was saying, I think he was saying, M equals E over C squared. So he was saying the same thing, but it had the, had the right. equation around a different way. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so they're saying, well, how he didn't, Einstein didn't. Einstein must have heard it from somebody else. And then changed it around a little bit. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, other people were saying much the same thing. I've got a copy of this. I watched it yeah. probably 10 years ago, I guess, and I think I'm going to watch it again now. Yeah, but they don't, get out, get out they, it. they don't mention Boscovich. No. So this, 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 um, the rabbit hole one, yeah. does that move on from... I think so. I think that's the sequel to it. Yeah. What the beep, and then it's the sequel down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But it gives you the general idea that everything is filled to around you. Mm -hmm. Fields of energy and so forth. Yeah. And yeah. this sort of thing you can date back to the strange thing as uh, Pythagoras was saying, because it was sort of uh, music. And, and the big thing is, is how we can control our own environment just with our thoughts and our thinking. Yes, mm -hmm. people go on about that as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you take the film that you taste like the yourself? <laughs> Not really. I sort of like more of a, not too hooked on the history of things, mate. Right? I sort of like, I sort of like reading. These old physics books on things and say, so, "What is it?" So, I started. Yeah. I got a circuit board. I wanted to actually generate power out of a sheet of aluminium, which is one of the things he showed how to do. And I started, and I got all the components for three units of the circuit board. But you need about twenty or thirty of these circuits in order to generate enough power to charge a car battery out of an aluminium sheet. And it's been done, it's been shown to work, but I just, I had to learn soldering and all sorts and so on. It's, hard, it's a half finished project in my yeah. lounge stuck in a, a, a chest there somewhere. And one day I'll buy all the bits and carry it on. But things like that. Huh? Did you get on the internet? I found all the stuff, yeah. You just want me to earlier. Yeah, so no, this is the sort of thing you did. You could get energy out of the air just using an aluminium machine. Enough to power a house out of a 16 foot by 16 foot aluminium sheet suspended up in the air. You know, that because there's energy in the unified field that you can actually extract. And by a strange circuitry which he puts together with all sorts of capacitors and relays, it's gradually honed down until it becomes power that's multiplied and magnified until it becomes usable in electrical power. There's stuff out there that can do that. Perhaps my photographs are energy or electricity. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I've heard mm -hmm. Roger's talk now. I was told okay. 10 years ago that we are electricity. Yeah. Electrical system. And just down. And energy, yeah. We haven't replaced all the yeah. Yeah. power stations that we need to replace. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but we all have yeah. energy. But really, your talk, Roger, is basically um, very, very similar on the lines of Jonathan Blackburn. Really, you've Probably. actually done a wonderful like introduction to that. Yeah. I've heard it, Jonathan. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the actual the secret of the of the universe is actually an angelic version of like David Hike's hard core fear. Um, he's talking about the aliens are being taken over by the Anunnaki yeah. coming down from Nibiru. And then all of a sudden, Jonathan Black is saying the angelic side of it, and you just said about the mathematical side. This is the science. And the, and the stuff, the science behind all this, this yeah. This is the science, and they've sort of like suppressed it. Yeah, that's by right. What they're teaching mainstream students. Yeah. They're sort of like. They're just teaching the joke, not the yeah. truth. Cut, cut it out. Yeah, but it's not only this. I mean, yeah. if you went into a primary school now and heard the teacher. So, who discovered America? 
Well, so they're telling Captain Cook, we know it wasn't, don't well, they? Well, but, but they say Columbus, yeah. 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 Vikings, yeah. and they say, and yet, if you go to a Muslim chapel in Scotland, you will see a chapel that was built while um, he was still in his youth, and in the freeze, you've got Easter. aloe vera and tobacco, which are Western and the American plants. Corn. 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 Yeah, corn. and corn as well. So what's happened is, there was somebody built, has already been there long yeah, before he went across Christopher Columbus, and yet they're still taught that he discovered America. It was still a continue, wasn't it? Yeah. No, so so the whole thing is yeah, ancient people, they reckon Phoenicians might have gone over to America. Yeah. And they found some yeah. road, this yes. is where the secret... And they trust them. Yeah. They trust them. Yeah. They trust them. Yeah. The Forbidden Archaeology mentions about that. It's another yeah. book that, that was written. Yeah. They find Roman amphora off the coast of Maine with wine still in it. Yeah. And they say, oh, <coughs> well, the Romans couldn't have got across yet. It must have been a modern day collector whose boat went down mm -hmm. and nobody knew mm -hmm. what it was. Rather than say it was the Romans. Yeah. Because this is what happens with archaeology. If you find something that doesn't fit with the grand plan of things, mm -hmm. then you discard it. Yeah. Or you, mm -hmm. Egypt is the absolute prominent example of that. Uh, the Egyptians say 4,000 years ago we got pyramids. And mm -hmm. anything that deviates from the narrow-minded um, part of it, uh, they just nobody wants to know. Mm. And Andy Collins, the good example, is that he went under the pyramids looking for the whole records under the pool of sleeps or whatever. Um, they, they blocked it off. Mm. So nobody can get there. And you had, um, what's the guy's name? Who uh, was there? He was in charge of Solus. Solus. Yeah. yeah, he was in charge of Egyptian antiquities. And if you wanted to do anything, you walked in the four by four. He was then, I think he was, even then his corruption got too bad, he was tossed out, but now he's back. So consequently, you have um, the infant school view of history, which will remain unchanging. I made my mind up, don't call me the facts. So. Mm -hmm. But also, Roger, you mentioned, oh, sorry to interrupt, sorry. Um, you, you mentioned about earlier on about the, um, the barbarian from the West. Yeah. Um, I know Richard Attenborough has actually said when the Romans came um, and they had the, the, all the statues of the, of the Roman um, holding down the barbarians, the barbarians looking up in agony because he's been, been torn to, you know, we are going to rule you. Mm -hmm. And they, they've recently found that actually we, there were no barbarians here at all. They were actually um, far more um, advanced than the Romans thought. And, and also the Romans actually came here for actual knowledge. Mm -hmm. They were after knowledge. And, and they stamped and blocked their straight roads on the, the actual lanes. We had straight the, uh, roads. We yeah, the ways before the roads. Down. So yeah, they weren't here to car calm the barbarian, they were here to get knowledge that was already here. Yeah, I think the original groups were fighting the ground. Sorry, you would say something. Yeah, what it was, it was not boring. The barbarians. The, uh, Greeks called anybody who wasn't Greek a barbarian. Uh, yeah. So it was only just saying the non yes. Greek. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Romans extent, but called them that yeah. or, or something that meant right. something derogatory, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. But, but that's the way you are. But, yeah. you, you think your, your society is a civilised one. So you're the best yeah, one's not. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. Just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Food, food starts the ADM. Um, several of our members, uh, inspired by Nigel Grace's talk on the Bosnian Greeks, have actually been there. Um, I have tried to sort of uh, cajole, bully, blackmail to get them to just speak for 10 minutes, um, just purely off the cuff. If any of the members are actually in the room and would like to speak um, before or after the AGM, it would greatly be appreciated because it is a wonderful thing that a speaker inspires members of the group that we spoke for the to, to go and look at what he's talking about. It's, it's unique. So um, if anybody is here and would like to speak for 10 minutes, it, it's an opportunity that I think you take. That's fine. Do you want a comfort break? Have a bit of a stroll around. We'll just pull the table out and get ready. And we'll... Shouldn't take us long and food's there waiting. So, um...
so we'll see what it's like. Thank you. You're going to have to meet you first.
lovely year, haven't we, really? Different speakers, it's been really quite nice. So um, we've got a lot of things to look forward to. We've had a nice year of um, different things and fantastic speakers. Only one, I think, just had one cancellation. Yeah, that was, that was today. So uh, we can't complain about that. We've had a lovely stuff. We've had a lot. Steve will talk about um, any new members that we have, which has been quite a nice surprise for us. And we've had a lot of people coming in um, from, from outside anyway, just walking in and look. Nice two people over there. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. And uh, it's been really nice to have new faces to turn up and actually then, then join the clan. So um, I'll leave all the other stuff to um, mm -hmm. Steve with um, figures and facts and things like that. So thank you. Uh, we've had one apology, that's from Michael. Yeah. Uh, how, is, how is Michael? Uh, I saw him yesterday, he's very fresh. Um, he goes nowhere now without.